been working with the uh, trans community okay. in Mexico okay because there's kind of like a genocide in Latin America from especially trans women mm -hmm. right but not going too far here in Toronto there's certainly communities that they don't understand the term of trans okay and I would like to ask you if you want to explain to some people about what does that mean to be trans for them to understand and to assimilate this community that exists. And it might happen that we have a member in our family mm -hmm. and they don't actually don't understand when a son or a daughter wants to have a transition mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. a different sex that they, they born. Yeah, I mean, I think what's crucial is to understand that uh, uh, your child or your friend or your spouse um, has an understanding of who they are and that uh, th that that understanding isn't something people come to lightly uh, people uh, struggle and uh, and and when you meet someone who's transitioning or who ex has expressed a need it's because they've been thinking about it for a long time um, even if they're a child they've been thinking for a long time the people don't um, uh, express this wish fri frivolously. So I, I think really, you know, the the question is how, how can you support the people in your life who you love? Uh, you may not understand every aspect of their life, but, you know, we meet so many people, we don't understand why they do all the things they do. Um, this, is, this is something which is uh, crucial to people's identity and sense of self, their capacity to be happy and be uh, be well in the world. Uh, so to be trans, I mean, uh, uh, depending upon uh, depending upon uh, our age and our experience, we will will encounter that differently. We'll have different struggles. So the question is, how can you support the people you love? Right. And um, do you think that now in society, especially in the queer community? Do we embrace uh, trans men, trans women in general? Well, I would say that, uh, you know, as, as several people said today at the conference, um, uh, we have a lot of visibility of trans people um, and trans people in the media. There's a lot of visibility now, but, uh, but we don't have the kinds of supports in our uh, uh, either our cultural communities or in the gay, lesbian, bi, trans community. Often, uh, we don't actually have substantial supports for people. Uh, and uh, and I think in Toronto, we've actually seen an erosion of supports for trans people in, in, some, in some ways over the last decade. Uh, so parts of the queer community are very welcoming and, and others, I think, are pretty obstinately hostile. And, uh, and I think that uh, that's changing in some places, but not everywhere. And under, by your own opinion, what is it that society, government, educators needs to do to actually welcome more the trans community into our everyday lives, like uh, issues with bathrooms, for example, and mm -hmm. I mean issues like the way that they see you when you are in transition. Yeah, I mean, I think respecting people's uh, self-determination is important. I, I think, obviously, accommodation within the home or the workplace or in education, respecting people's pronouns, names, uh, access to gendered spaces like bathrooms, but also, I, I think, healthcare, comprehensive healthcare for trans people. I, I think a lot of trans people uh, do sex work for various reasons and I think we need to see sex work decriminalized and I think we need to stop stigmatizing people for being sex workers. We need to understand uh, that uh, sex workers are members of our communities and many trans women may, may be involved in sex work. Not all by any means but many and I, so I think uh, I think 
it's not just transsexuality, but we need to think about how racism and classism uh, and and uh, and hostility to uh, poor people, uh, people who are trans, um, how these things work together and 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 build supports that recognize that uh, 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 being privileged doesn't make one a good person, and being deprivileged doesn't make one a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and now that you mentioned these uh, sex workers, the many of our trans uh, women mm -hmm. ended up doing uh, sex work because the opportunities of employment, because just because they trans women, they don't have more opportunities to have a, a work. Yeah, I think that I think that definitely. Uh, you know, I went back and did my PhD after dropping out of a PhD program. I dropped out of the PhD because I encountered discrimination and I couldn't transition. And then after several years, I discovered that it was very difficult to get a job and hold a job. Uh, so I ended up going back to school eventually because there happened to be a union at the school where I applied and I knew I'd have paid work for six years. Um, that's the only reason I finished my PhD because uh, I'd been trying to get employed and I would, I was transitioning, I would uh, lose a job after a few days a week when I started presenting as a woman and began, you know, while I was transitioning in the early stages, uh, it was very difficult to hold a job. Um, that said, um, some people do sex work because it's it's uh, the only option. Some people do sex work because it's a lucrative option. It's a good option. Uh, sometimes, you know, people have different experiences of it. So um, I think it's important we not stigmatize or, or be hostile or criminalize sex workers, but I think we shouldn't, uh, treat them as if they were just victims or objects of pity, I think they should be respected. And I think that's crucial. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your talk. That was a very important talk and uh, trans temporality conference in, in Toronto. Hopefully it can happen every year. I, I hope they'll be able to do that. It was really a great conference and it was really lovely to meet you. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You.